Good day, everyone. We worship Makoka Enterprises. Today, we're going to be discussing on how to carry out installation of FCU control panels. So in this lesson, we are going to be driving us through so we get to understand exactly the different components that we need and the materials which, which we'll be discussing on both the consumables and the non-consumables. So how we put them together so that we'll be able to carry out the FCU control panel that will be used to control the different FCUs in our different projects. So this is a project which I embarked on. So I'll be explaining exactly what are the different materials that we used in carrying out or assembling and doing the wiring of the FCU control panel. And then also the different tools that are required so that we get an effective installation of the FCU control panel. How to carry out installation, assembly and wiring of FCU control panel. So I'll take us now to the positioning of the different components. So um, before we drive into understanding all the different types of components which we use in order to carry out the FCU control panel. So we'll start first with the positioning. On the positioning on the left, the left hand side, we have a transformer which is uh, rated which is um, 240 volts slash 24 volts. So this is a step down transformer, which steps down from 240 volts to 24 volt DC. So actually this is used so that we'll be able to operate a valve actuator. We move now to release. So we have three set of release here, which are all 230 volt AC. We have a cable manager, as we can see here. And then down we have our terminal block connectors. So we have them piled as such so that we can get an effective connection of the different components. So I'll move now straight so we get to see the different list of materials, the different materials that we used in carrying out the installation of the FCU control panel. So the first is a transformer. So we are going to use, we are going to be used needing a transformer, which is going to step down from 240 volts to 24 volt DC. So the transformer is a static device which is used to step down or step up voltages. In this case, now we require a step down transformer. So it will be stepping down from 240 volts to 24 volt DC. The next on our list is um, a relay. So this is a third. 230 volt relay. So when we see a 230 volt attached on our relay, we know this is the amount of voltage that will be feeding to the coil of that relay. So actually a relay is a switching device, which is um, the switching terminals are operating only when we have sufficient voltage supplied to the coil of that relay. So in this case, the amount of voltage that should be supplied to that relay will be 230 volt DC AC. We have the next, which is a cable manager. So this is um, some kind of a containment which is being used inside the control panel or the FCU control panel, which is used to manage and safeguard the cables that will be used or connecting the different components in the FCU control panel. The next on our list is a terminal block connector, as you can see here on the picture below. It is being used to connect uh, different wires and then also having the different ports at the output which is going now to either the thermostat, the valve actuators and all that. The next on our list is a DIN ray. This is being used now to, to attach or couple the, the relay to the plate as well as the terminal block connectors as well as you can see here on the terminal block connector. So we put them on the DIN ray so that we'll be, at, we'll be able to attach them to our plate. The next on our list is a PVC wire. So this is used now to do the connections or interconnecting all the different components together. The next on our list is an aluminum sheet. Of course, we're gonna be needing an aluminum sheet to carry out our installation of the FCU control panel. So this is where all the different components are going to be laid, screwed to the 
aluminum sheet so that we will be able to carry out the connections or the wirings. And next on our list, we are going to be needing a screw as well. So we'll be able to screw all the different components to the aluminum sheet. The next on our list is um, a ferrule. We are going to be needing a ferrule, which will act as an identification level, which while we see the different numbering, we'll be able to identify where this connection is going or moving to and for what purpose is serving. The next on our list is locks. So we are going to be needing a cable locks. So this is now bringing all the different strands of the wires together. We'll put them now in the lock so that we'll be able to cream and then connect to the different ports. So we'll move now to the list of tools that will be required and all we are, we are going to be needing to carry out the installation of FCU control panel. So of course we are going to be used needing a screwdriver. The next we are going to be needing as well a side potter, which we will be using that to cut our different wires while we are doing our connections. The next on our list is um, a crimping tool. So we are going to be needing a crimping tool so that we crimp the locks, hold it firm to the different wires that we'll be using to connect all the different um, components together. The next on our list is a drill machine. So we are going to be using or needing a drill machine so that we put all the different holes on the aluminum sheet so that we will be able to connect a DIN rail to the aluminum sheet as well as um, the transformers as well. We'll be able to connect them or screw them tight to the aluminum sheet. The next on our list is a hacksaw. So we are going to be needing a hacksaw as well. So we'll use a hacksaw, use them, use it to cut our DIN ray as well as um, the cable manager so that it will best suit the size that we require to do our connection on the aluminum sheet. The next on our list, of course, we are going to be needing a multimeter. So while we are done with our different connections or the different wirings on our aluminum sheet or on our FCU control panel, we'll be able to carry out now uh, different testing. So we carry out continuity tests as well as mega tests as well. So while we are doing all that, we'll be needing a multimeter to carry out the different testing on the panel board. So these are the tools as well as the different materials that will be required and will be needing while we are doing our installation of the FCU control panel. So we'll dive now straight on the wiring diagram. So I'm going to be explaining how the different wires and the different functions of the different equipments that we will be connecting on our FCU control panel board. As you can see here, we have a schematic representation of the FCU panel as well as the thermostat. As you can see on the left side, we have a thermostat. So we have different connections and different ports. So we'll start first on the thermostat. So we have different ports on the thermostat. We have a live neutral, we have the fan low, fan medium and fan high. So these are the different speeds on the, on the thermostat, which will act as a signal that we are initiating to the control panel so that it will be able to give a command depending on which signal we are applying to the control panel. So we might be talking of low speed, medium speed or high speed. So on the top here now we have the ground and then we have some control ports, which we'll be using to control the valve actuator for the different controls. So we will move straight now to our transformer. So the transformer gets the phase and the neutral feeding to the primary of the transformer, which is 240 volt. And then now it steps it down to 24 volt DC, which is going now to be connected to the valve actuator. It's very important. So we get to understand that our valve actuators are our 24 volt DC. So we require a step down transformer so that we'll be able to use a 24 volt at the secondary of the transformer to feed the actuators. 
The next now we're we'll looking at the different release, which we mentioned they are all 230 volts AC. So we are going to be feeding the coil of the relay with a 230 volt AC. So we start now from, we have all the neutral, which are all connected together as you can see on the relay. So we connect all of them together and then it moves now to the neutral of the thermostat as well as connecting to the transformer as well. So we move next to the live, which is the phase. We connect all our different phases together by making sure that we get the low speed from the thermostat. It gets to the low speed of the thermostat now gets to the A1 of our relay as you can see. So we get it as four. So we represent it here as four. This is what we are going to put as our labeling or the ferro that we are going to place on the low speed is going to be four. So we connect it at A1. We move over to the medium speed. We connect it at A1 of the next relay, which is represented as five. We move to the high speed of the thermostat, which is moving now to connect to A1 of the third relay, which is represented as six. So on the, the contacts now of the relay, we will now have all the different common or all the C contacts all connected together. And then they move now to the live connector so connect it to the live which is all which will also connect to the life of the thermostat and then we take to the terminal block so the next part now is going to be our different contacts now that are leaving now to from the normal open contact of the different or the respective release so we have the massage so we have seven eight and nine. So all these different contacts now are going to move now as well to the terminal block, which are going to represent either the low speed, the medium speed, and the high speed command. So these are all the commands which we will, will be connecting to our FCU or our FCU itself, the fan coil unit. And then also we have different ports here, which we have our live and neutral, which is 240 volt. This is where we are going to fit either living from a spore unit or probably from an isolator, which is coming now to fit on this port so that we have our live and neutral connecting to our panel board as well as to the F to the thermostats. So basically, this is how the different connection has been done while we are doing a FCU control panel connection. So this is how we are going to put all the different components together and then we connect them so that we have a smooth function when it comes to the different operations. So we'll now drive straight now for us to understand or to see how I was carrying out my project on the FCU control panel and how I assemble all the different components together from the sheets, doing all the drillings and connecting the transformers, the relays, the gene rays, and as well as the, the different terminal blocks and then also the cable manager. So we put all of them together, screw them tied to an aluminum sheet and then start doing our connections as well. So when we finish with the connections, we carry out the testing as well, which is very important. So once we are done with that, we'll be able to carry a control panel to site so that we carry our commissioning on the FCU itself or the fan core unit.
Ah, você não vai. 